So there are a lot of free online tools and calculators that I use every day in my consulting work. And this is one of my favorites. I am on this site all the time. Basically what it is, is a, a conglomeration of all of the ASHRAE data that is out there in a map form. So it just is a tool that makes it a little easier to get at all this stuff that's kind of embedded in tables in other formats. As an example, we're gonna start with some place that I think of as kind of an extreme environment, which is Key West. So you can uh, search through all of it. You can see that I'm showing all the stations right now. You could see where you can get information about all this stuff. So Key West is kind of a particular place because it turns out that in Southern Florida, in other places aside from Key West, in most of the year, the temperature and humidity of the outside air makes the dew point of that air higher than the average temperature of indoor spaces which means that if any outdoor air comes in contact with inside temperatures, it will make those surfaces wet. And that's a really dangerous thing. So that's why Florida is particularly interesting for people who do what I do. So you can see here that we've got a whole bunch of basic information. I'll just, we'll use kind of Key West to get our, our heads on straight about this. So you can see the latitude longitude that we're at, the elevation in feet, 16 feet in this case. We can see the time zone and blah, 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 all this different stuff, the climate zone as well. But then we get into all of the tabular data that's going to be from the ASHRAE historical measurements. And why this is so important is because we met, we like, were <laughs> designing and installing air conditioning and dehumidification systems for decades and decades, like uh, apparently close on 100 years before anybody was like, hey, is it really true that the hottest temperatures and the wettest temperatures are the same? Like when it's the hottest temperature in my area, is that really where there's going to be the most humidity in the air? And so they were like, well, let's measure it. And ASHRAE is the group that would do something like that. They're all engineers who are real nerdy about this stuff. And they started measuring it and they found out that like, not only is it not the same temperature, it's like heinously not the same temperature in some cases. And that is what the topic of this video is going to be about. So we'll just get started by saying in the coldest month, which is one, which is January, we have a heating dry bulb temperature. That's the temperature. Uh, that's a 99%. This is what we're designing these uh, heating systems for in all climates is the 99% temperature, not the 100% coldest, the 99% coldest at 57.8 degrees. Not very cold. The hottest temperature we're designing for is the 99% hottest, not the 100% hottest. And that temperature in Key West is 89.9, 90 degrees. I know it gets hotter there and we can, we'll explore that a little bit more uh, later in the video, but we can also see that at that temperature, it's not the wettest. The wettest temperature is right here, dehumidification, mean coincident dry bulb. So the wettest temperature in Key West is not 89 or 90, it's actually 85, five degrees cooler. And at that temperature, we have this many grains per pound of moisture in the air. If you have not seen this thing, I use this so much that it's like real, getting real beat up. But this is a free download from my website and I'm linking it on screen right now. It's also in the description from this video. Uh, highly recommend that you use that because translating between relative humidity and absolute humidity is very important. I'll have lots of people call me and say, hey, today it's actually pretty humid outside, but my house is super dry. What's going on? And I'll say, great, what humidity is it outside? And they'll say it's 90%. And I'll say, okay, what temperature is it? And they'll say, it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees C. And I'll be like, oh, that's actually super dry because percentages of relative humidity are not actually what is going on. It only means this is how much humidity the air can hold. So getting at this information, this humidity ratio, which is right here, which is grains of moisture per pound of dry air. This is very important. This is 150. That's basically the highest that we see in the United States of America. You can get up to 160. Um, I've seen, but that's basically as wet as it gets. There are other places in the world that get, have more, more moisture in the air than that, but we're not, that's not going to be inside this video because this isn't a video about extremes. This is a video about re real life situations. Those are the three basic data points that we're going to take out of this table, trying to solve problems for people that are humidity and comfort related problems. So let's now go to a place that you would not associate as being a really wet place, which is Minneapolis in Minnesota. Uh, Minneapolis, it turns out, has pretty cold winters, right? We're at, first of all, not quite a thousand feet of elevation. 
We're in climate zone 6A. That's about as cold as it gets in the United States and the continental US. Our 99% coldest temperature is negative six Fahrenheit. Our 99% uh, hottest temperature is 88 degrees, but our 99% wettest temperature is 81, and we still have 121 grains per pound of moisture in the air. So we need to now start figuring out like, ooh, should we have dehumidification in Minneapolis? And this is where a lot of people who are the old school people are gonna be like, it's a Northern climate. No, you don't need dehumidification. That is crazy. That's the same thinking that gets you thinking like, oh, you don't need air conditioning in Canada. In Vancouver, they had a record setting in the world, record setting heat wave a couple of years ago, and it killed like hundreds of people. So this is the kind of thing that will help us is math. We do the math. So, so let's real quick go over here and do um, use another cool tool, which is red calc. And we're going to use it uh, on a home. We're going we're gonna to do the ASHRAE 62.2 calculation, which is another ASHRAE. We're not going to worry too much about arguing about whether this is a good number or not. We're just going to get a, like a piece of information out of this. So let's say that this is an existing home um, and it's in, uh, where are we? Minneapolis. So we're in Minnesota. And we're in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. We're going to pick. Okay, so floor area, let's just pick an average size house, 3,000 square feet with three bedrooms, four people. Height, let's say 20 feet. Blower door test, let's say that this blower door test, which at 3,000 square feet times, let's just say nine foot ceilings everywhere, that's 27,000 cubic feet of air. This house does not have a basement. If the basement was there, we would count it as part of the, the uh, square footage and then as part of the volume. So what we do is divide by 60. Volume divided by 60 gives us 450. That's our one ACH 50 on the blower door. We wanna to go to, let's just say this place is at seven ACH 50. So I multiply by seven, we get 3150. Sorry about all the notifications on my phone here, or on my uh, computer. Okay, so what this says is that the whole house needs 120 CFM of ventilation. This video is not about ventilation. That's not what we're doing with it right now. The infiltration credit that we would get from this is 148. 148 is an, a calculated, it's an estimated, um, because of course actual infiltration, which is air leakage into and out of the house, is entirely dependent on the weather. On a very mild day, you'll have very little of it. On a very extreme day, you'll have lots of it. This number is gonna be kind of an average of the two of those. So you're looking at about 148 cubic feet of air coming into this house from outside, this imaginary house that we just invented, every minute of every day. So now, what I can do is come back over here and do this quick calculation. So if I've got 120.7 uh, grains per pound, I take 120.7, and that's my 99% wettest. Again, I don't want to use the 100% wettest, and if I wanted to get even closer to the more extreme, I'd use this 0.4% instead of the 1%, that's the 99.6% wettest. I'm not gonna worry about that right now because like worrying about the very peaks of the spikes in the valleys is not, that's, that's neither here nor there. That's not real life. You're being too much of a scientist at that point, so don't overthink it. 120.7 less 65 gives us 55.7. We need to remove 55.7 grains per pound from this air that's outside that's coming in through air leakage in order to get down to 65 grains per pound. The kind of realm that we're generally looking for when we are aiming for humidity inside, this is my number, not anybody else's, is between 35 and 65 grains per pound. In the wintertime, 35, 30 at the lowest uh, is like a good number. 65 is 75 degree air at 50% relative humidity. So I want to get no wetter than that. Any extra wetness, I want to remove with a dehumidifier. So to get there, I need to remove 55.7. I'm gonna multiply that number by the CFM that's getting drawn into my house, which is 148. And then I'm gonna multiply by a coefficient, which is 0 0.0148. That is a magic number that uh, combines a whole bunch of stuff into one uh, big number here. At that point, I have 122 pints per day of dehumidification that I need to use in this house. Since I'm not worrying about an ERV, this video is not about ERVs, 
what I need is a dehumidifier that can do that. That's not a 120 pint per day dehumidifier, by the way. That's a much bigger one because a 120 pint per day dehumidifier, if it says it can do that, it can only do that if you feed it a diet of 80 degree, 60% relative humidity air all the time. So really what I need is more like a 150 to a 200 pint per day dehumidifier. Okay, that's Minneapolis, okay, in a, in a leaky house. And that's also because we can't always depend on the air conditioner drying out the house. Because if the house uh, is set, like my parents like to set their thermostat to 78 degrees in the summertime, the outdoor temperature is 81, it's a cloudy day, the air conditioner is not running that much in the first place. In the second place, it was oversized to begin with. And it's got twice as much power as it needs. Therefore, it's going to do what's called short cycling. If you've watched this channel or any other channel on YouTube, you know that short cycling is what is uh, going to cause you to have major humidity problems in a house that like would have worked fine a long time ago. Now, because of a bunch of different factors, this is becoming more of a problem. Okay, let's go to a third location here. Let's go to Arizona. We think of it as like the desert, so we don't have to worry too much about humidity, right? Wrong. So we're right outside Phoenix. We're in what's called Buckeye, Arizona. <clears throat> uh, we're at 1,000 feet of elevation, basically the same elevation as we were in Minneapolis. We're in climate zone 2B, very different than the Minneapolis climate zone. Our 99% hottest temperature that we're looking at in this area is 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Our wettest temperature that we're looking at is 80. That is 28 degrees south of the hottest temperature. Even if you design the air conditioner in this house, you do the manual J calculation, you do the manual S and the D, and you follow all the rules and everything, what the air conditioner is designed to handle is temperature, not humidity, first. And the temperature is designed to handle is 108. At 80, the system that is designed for that amount of heat is not going to be running very much, right? So even if it's an inverter-driven system, it don't, they only ramp down to like 30%. So at that point, it turns on at 30%, turns off at 30%. It doesn't ramp anywhere. So this thing is not necessarily going to be drying a whole lot. And at 80, we've got 124 grains per pound of moisture. That's still a lot. So even in Arizona, you have to worry about this. And this is where people who do not use math don't know. And I was just on a call with a client who was like, you know, doing this kind of work in Canada. And I think that the most important thing that you can do is just feel free to ask dumb questions. How much humidity is there? Somebody says, it's the desert. There's no humidity. That's not a scientific answer. That's just you talking. So just go find out. If you have a dumb question, go get a, an answer for it. And like, you'll find out that there are no dumb questions. There's only people who are afraid to ask those questions, and that's what you'll find a lot of. So as the last thing, let's just go to a place that's gonna prove one other interesting point, which is Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> okay, so Boulder is um, lovely, prone to forest fires, prone to flooding also, interesting. Um, but the one other thing that's really interesting here is that we've got the wettest temperature is 55 degrees. That's when it's wettest. And at that temperature, we have a humidity ratio of 75. Now I said we need to reduce the humidity down to 65. So that, that would lead you, if you're just using first glance math, to be like, oh, we need a little bit of dehumidification. I'd run through my humidity ratio. I'd take seven, 65, uh, out of 75, I need to take 10 grains per pound out of the air, do my 148 CFM or whatever the air leakage is for this particular house, which I calculated uh, or estimated. And then I would install a dehumidifier. But it doesn't take into account the one other thing, which is elevation. We're at 9828 elevation. So that's where this other feature of this website is kind of cool. So we put 9828 up here, and we make the temperature 75, and we want to make it 50% uh, relative humidity inside. Boom. The amount of actual grains per pound at 75 degrees at 50% relative humidity is 93 grains per pound, not 65. That's because the elevation makes the air much lighter, right? Because you're just so much higher. So this is an important metric. We, what we actually need to do in the summertime is humidify the air in Boulder. And by the way, the air at 55 degrees outside, remember the air conditioner's not running, it's, that's in heating mode. And so there's all kinds of other dynamics that are happening here. So I hope that this isn't too nerdy. 
um, and like too involved. But I just, I think that it's really interesting to get into all these math bits. If you're asking questions, keep asking questions. Go and seek free calculators online. I will be showing more of these things. If you guys have other ones that you want me to explore and look into, aside from my huge list that I've got that I'm gonna be working my way through, please feel free to comment below. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Tune in next time.